Hello, everyone, and welcome to another webinar of the MCA Around the World webinar series. We are very happy to have you with us tonight, but also, uh, more importantly, to have uh, Precious from Africa chapter who organized this webinar for funding opportunities for early career researchers. Hi, Precious. How are you? Can you hear us? I'm fine, thank you. Would you like yes, to- Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, we also can hear you. Would you like to introduce oh. uh, our invited speaker? Okay. Um, good evening, everyone, and welcome to our webinar. Thank you for joining us. My name is Precious Ekpere, and I am the chair of the African chapter, Mario Curie Alumni Association. Today we'll be having with us Professor Yusisi Fufelini as our speaker. She is um she joined the I Nano WS as a senior lecturer in July 2018, and she is now an associate professor. Her research expertise is on electrochemical biosensors, electrocatalysis, catalysis for, mon for monitoring disease biomarkers, example of which are the biomarkers for the SARS-CoV-2, and um, pharmaceutical contaminants in water. She has published more than 45 articles on nanomaterials, and the applications is an electrochemical sensor, electrocatalysis, and photocatalysis. Professor Felony has graduated three MSc students at UNISA and is currently supervising and co supervising four MSc students, four PhDs, and mentoring two postdoctoral fellows and several. WLC graduate interns. That is three PhDs, four MSCs, and five BSCs. She has several external research grants, inclu including grants from TIA, NRF, SAASTA, TSP, Royal Society of Chemistry, WIR, and University of Michigan STEM Africa Initiative. Her recent awards and recognition include the Principal Award of Excellence in Research, that is in 2022, the University of Michigan African Presidential Scholars, UMAPS Fellowship in 2021 to 2022, the TWAS UNESCO Associateship Fellowship in 2022 and 2000, 2023. The South African Department of Science and Innovation, DSI, TATA Women in Science, Engineering and Technology Award in 2016, and the Laurel UNESCO Women in Science Doctoral Fellowship Award in 2016. She has made several keynotes and guest speaker presentations at national and international institutions. So ladies and gentlemen, she's here today to share with us on the funding opportunities available for um, earlier career researchers, especially those in Africa. So the next voice you will hear will be that of Professor Yusisi Fulfelini. You're welcome, Prof. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you very much, uh, Precious, for that wonderful um, introduction. And thank you so much for the invite. I'm unable to share my screen right now. Let me see. What is happening here? Um, can you see the green button uh, share screen and maybe if you oh great let me see are you able to see my screen right now yes we do okay 
Um, good evening, good morning, everybody. Um, today, uh, I'm going to be talking about the research funding opportunities for early career researchers. But before I do that, I want to take you through my content, which is about where I am. Preci Precious already introduced me. Um, and then I'm going to talk about what we have in terms of the research activities, and then the importance of research for early career to meet career researchers. So basically for now, I am um, an associate professor um, at the Institute for Nanotechnology and Water Sustainability. And at our institute, we have um, different focus areas. We have nanotechnology, focus area, and also we have water sustainability. And under the water sustainability, we have um, two um, thematic areas and under the nanotechnology, we have three focus areas or thematic areas. And I belong to the applied electrochemistry. So basically under the applied electrochemistry, we do a lot of research in terms of um, synthesis, characterization of various nanomaterials and apply these materials and sensors in electrocatalysis. And we have various themes. The second theme is energy materials. And then we combine our expertise there for uh, capacity deionization. So we are a team of seven staff members, and currently I am leading the thematic area. But when I'm moving on, I just want to touch base on the projects that are funded, which is why we are here today to talk about research opportunities. So these are the funded projects. So Precious, when she was introducing me, she mentioned various research grants that I hold. So these are the research grants that are funded by different funding bodies, particularly nationally and internationally. And now, just to touch base on the previous slide, this funding uh, focused on my research area, which is um, biosensors or electrochemical um, sensors. So in this case, we combine um, sensing part and the UV part, because we are doing a lot of work in terms of photoelectrochemical um, studies. And because of the COVID that you know, we currently, currently have, we, we attained some research funding uh, from National Research Foundation in South Africa, and also from Royal Society of Chemistry in the UK. So moving on, um, we do not only focus only on research funding that is based in the lab. We do a lot of research in terms of community engagement. So it's very important as young researchers to look for funding that will assist us to promote science to young scientists or those who are starting up from learners up to um, the, um, the university um, students. So it's very important that we look for funding that will bring awareness because we come from different backgrounds and um, Precious is in Nigeria now. She can have some funding in Nigeria that will bring awareness in terms of you know, schools to promote research. And also because now when we talk about nanotechnology, where I belong to, we can actually incorporate some of the nanotechnology applications or just information about nanotechnology into rural schools or into different schools. And also the reason why we are talking about research funding is because we want to contribute in, in developing skills to um, the youth. And um, of course, we nurture the youth. Then of course, when we do all these activities, particularly for the community engagement, we also participate in mentoring young girls, particularly from age 18 up to 25 years. So this particular mentorship is from Sub-Saharan Africa. So it's very important for young researchers who are looking for funding 
or who have funding to promote science or to mentor young researchers into um, science field or different fields. And also we have another, um, you know, um, uh, internship, which is under the Water Research Commission in South Africa. So as I mentioned in the previous slide that as much as we are promoting science, we attain this research funding for community engagement. We need to think about how do we make science to be attractive to learners? So we can come up with strategies in terms of bringing three minutes, you know, talks. We bring competitions to different schools so that we can encourage those who are starting up, those who see themselves as researchers to, to, to promote science in different parts of the world. Now, because we always hear about 4IR, fourth industrial resolution or revolution per se. So we always hear about the 4IR, but how do we participate as young researchers or early career researchers? So we need to be able to bring mentorship ahead. We need to be participating in terms of developing technologies. Um, you know, for benefiting the 4IR or that will be aligned with the 4IR. And also when we are promoting STEM in the rural village, we should be able to equip um, teachers, we should be able to equip students and learners um, so that they will be able to, to understand what science is all about or, or research is all about. So the main reason for joining this webinar today is to talk about the importance of research grants or fellowships because they are interlinked. So the reason for that is because we, we as early career researchers or mid career researchers is to actually be able to achieve the independence in research. And uh, the reason why we and looking for these grants is because we want to start up our own fields. We want to start up our own research labs. And the reason why we want to do this is because we want to uh, collaborate with African countries or international you know, spaces. In that way, we'll be collaborating in terms of getting joint publication, research grants and supervision of students. And we get the opportunity of visiting other places or institutions. So that's the, those are the most important things for um, applying or looking for research grants. Now, why am I bringing this slide? Because of course I've talked about the importance. So if we go back to the African, uh, Africa agenda, 2063, this Africa agenda has several aspirations, but I'm not going to talk about all these aspirations. I'm going to only focus only on one aspiration, which is to nurture young researchers or youth when developing skills or developing tools for um, sustainable development goals. So you can see that we are linking the Africa agenda to the sustainable development goals. And we're linking the sustainable development goals to the national development plan. What do we have for now? We have a lot of challenges and we have strategies for up to 2030. We are approaching 2030, but are we there yet? No. So what are the steps that we need to take in order for us to take up space and to nurture these young researchers? We should be able to look for funding those funding will be able to assist us in mentoring these young researchers and also to grow ourselves and to participate in terms of aligning our research into the sustainable development goal, particularly for health and well-being, water and electricity. We have load sharing in South Africa, so we need to actually look into research that will, you know, be aligned with the affordable energy. Now, why am I bringing this slide? 
I'm bringing this slide because we are talking about motivating the youth. I was once a student and my career grew from looking for funding, from looking for fellowships. And these fellowships uh, were linked into mentoring or becoming a role model to young researchers. So this is where my career started as a mentor. I was mentoring young researchers from my PhD degree. And I was the voice at that time um, talking about nanotechnology. It is still a reigning area. So I was talking about research on nanotechnology. I was talking about tools for monitoring disease, particularly breast cancer at that point in time. So it is very important for us, young researchers, to look for these fellowships because we need to be able to spread you know, our skills. We need to be able to collaborate. We need to be able to um, come up with tools that will solve African problems. We have a lot of problems, but if we are working as a team from different African parts, we can be able to achieve, we can be able to solve all these issues and train young researchers and also be able to create more jobs because we have issues in terms of job creation. Now, linking that slide to this slide is that when I was that student, I was able to mentor students, mentor young researchers, but then at this point in time, I was mentoring young girls from Sub-Saharan Africa. And these young girls were so determined. Yeah, I remember one of the um, mentee uh, wanted to develop, um, uh, to come up with a method for using indigenous plants in Nigeria to cure diabetes. So if we can discuss all these issues with young researchers, we can be able to, you know, to achieve a lot. All right. Now, as I was mentioning in the previous slides about not working alone, we are able to work as a team. So we do have a program called South African Young Academy of Sciences and other programs worldwide, particularly in Africa. So when it comes to research funding, we can collaborate with different scholars. It doesn't mean that we have to collaborate only in science, we can bring social sciences, we can bring law, we can bring all the expertise in order for us to achieve one goal, which is to promote science or to promote ourselves and become leaders, next generation leaders. Now coming to the fellowships, like I was saying, the fellowships and research grants, they are interlinked because some of the fellowships that are out there come as a research grant. So when, it, when we're looking at the first um, fellowship for the Royal Society of Chemistry, you have to become a member. Um, you have to become at least an associate member of the Royal Society of Chemistry in order for you to be able to attain or to even apply for research grants under the Royal Society of Chemistry. So this RSC has research fellowships. It also has research grants for startup fund. Now coming to the Fulbright, we do have a Fulbright for students, particularly for PhD students. And this Fulbright, um, most of the time you will have to travel for nine months to um, uh, America, for example. And we do have a full, Fulbright for early career or mid career researchers. We also have Humboldt. Humboldt is based in Germany. It is one of the most prestigious fellowship. So Humboldt, it funds yourself, your husband, your family provided that you'll be taking some courses in Germany. And we do have TOAS UNESCO Associateship Scheme. So this TOAS, it can act as a 
fellowship can also act as a research grant. PUAS gives an opportunity for one to visit different labs. As I've mentioned in my first slides about the importance of fellowships. Remember, we all want to grow. We want to move from step one up to step five. But in order for us to do, to be able to develop, we have to be working with people who are established in the field. So TWAS UNESCO would give you an opportunity to visit you know, institutions that are doing a lot of research. Um, you'll be able to get um, research funding for equipment and chemicals. Now, when it comes to the UMAPS fellowship, Precious saw it in my um, biography. It is a fellowship that will allow one to travel and spend five months in America. And there are opportunities there for one to be able to apply for research funding. For example, the STEM Seed Africa, Michigan. I applied for this particular funding when I was in the UMAPS program. So there are so many opportunities that we need to look out for. And we have to be able to communicate with uh, different people, provided that we want to spread our wings in terms of expanding our expertise. Yes, of course, when we are starting up, we have to be focusing on what we know. But as we are applying for these different fundings, we need to bring more synergy with different people who are going to uplift us and we become um, future leaders. Now coming to the research grants. I've talked about RSC already in the previous slide. So you can have research grant fellowship under the RSC. Now, I've listed some for national, which is South Africa, and then I've listed some international research grants. Now, when it comes to these research grants, of course, one has to select niche. I've talked about the sustainable development goals in the previous slide. And once you have that niche, and you read the call, for example, for the National Research Foundation, there will be different calls. Tutuka, for example, Tutuka is for emerging researchers in South Africa. We also have competitive support for unrated researchers. There's also one for rated. So there are so many opportunities for research funding. But what is important for us to do is that we need to read the call in order for us to be able to attain this research funding. Applying for research funding doesn't mean that you will get the research funding, but it prepares you to be able to understand that, yes, if I'm trying to apply for this research funding, I will be able to get one research funding at some point in time. And of course, I was talking about, you know, collaborating with African countries or different countries. There is a bilateral fund. There's also multilateral fund. Uh, for example, BRICS. BRICS has five countries that are part of the, you know, that research grant. Now, for, 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 for the tours, we have tours, like I was saying in the previous slide, that we have tours that will fund you as an individual. But we also have um, tours that will fund a group. So if you are applying for a group fund, to apply for an equipment, for example, one can apply for, for that, for, for a group fund. We also have another research grant called the Organization for the Prohibited of Chemical Weapons. That type of research grant, it has two parts. It can be a research funding. It can also be um, a fellowship for one to be able to travel. Now there are several research funding, but I decided to select a few because of course, when one is looking for a call, you can look for a call that will fund you as an individual. But of course, one should be able to put an application and put the collaborators in order for one to work as a team. And we have the last funding, which, you know, 
takes about five African countries, which is the research and innovation systems for Africa. So the reason for this funding is to promote um, innovation in Africa. If we can look for these funds to promote our innovation, Africa would really, really go far. Africa would develop um, in those lacking areas. And if we do work as a team, we would really, really be very much competitive in, in finding solutions for African countries. Thank you so much for listening and thank you so much for the invite. Thank you so much, Prof. Thank you for the beautiful presentation. Um, thank you everyone for coming. Please um, put your questions in the, in the chat or indicate by a hand raise if you have any question. And this, um, this webinar was organized by the Maria Curie Alumni Association African chapter. And we are hoping that you benefited from this presentation. Thank you again, Prof. We are grateful. Thank you. Thank you.